What's up gang, it's Coach Red from Pal Synergy today and I'm coming to you giving a video today in regards to a question that was given to me by one of the Palers that I happen to be working with uh, and his question was or his, his concern was about how much lean he should be uh, incorporating into his stroke and at the same time um, seeing some of his competition or seeing some of the, the top Palers in that in respects to paddling on an OC1, that they're not really moving their bodies as much, or at least that's what it looks like, right? And, and truth be told, it does all, it, it varies. People's physiology is obviously different. No one person is the same. Um, but I would say that anyone that typically has longer arms tends to have the better, uh, has, should have the advantage. And if someone is in my competition range is, taller than me, has longer arms than me, yet I'm ahead of them, well, uh, it's just only a matter of time before they figure it out and then they end up walking past me. Uh, at least I would hope that's the case. Um, and again, it's just a matter of getting, being able to get to that grab, being able to load that blade before your competition. And it, again, this is all dependent on how your body is. So depending on someone who's tall, who's got really long legs with really short T-Rex arms, they're going to have a little bit, they're going to probably have to use that torso. They're going to have to use their body a little bit more just to kind of overcompensate for that, from that, from their, where they're sitting in, the, in relation to their legs and how long they are versus somebody who maybe is tall as me, but has, who is five foot seven, but has arms that should belong to someone who's six foot two, you know, I'm just going to get my arms out, out in front of me and then I'm going to grab. I'm not going to necessarily have to use my, throw my body weight so much. Um, but I am still, and regardless of what they, what you see, they, people are still moving their bodies because it's just a natural thing to do because in a sense in where you can reach out and put your hands out, but you, at some point you have to lean a little forward to put that blade in the water. And I'm going to talk about that. So in this instance here, if you've seen some of my other videos about reaching, right? So this is reach. This is as far reach as I can go. I can chew my shoulders outward a little bit, and this is as far as I can get my arms out in front of me, right? If I, now all I really have to do is set the blade in the water. Well, if I, put, I stack my hands, well, my blade's still out of the water, right? But in this instance, I'm, I'm here, and then I'm gonna lean just enough to put the blade in the water. Now, typically, what I want folks to understand is that when you try to do this drill, when you, if you happen to be on the one man or on the water, get your hands out in front of you, you know, start, so you got your pyramid of power, like I like to call it, okay? And as you're starting to shift to stack your hands, as that top pin comes up, now you're gonna move your body out. I'll, I'll switch angles here in a second so you can see what I'm doing. And then you're leaning forward to set the blade. The act of leaning forward is setting the blade in the water. And you, some folks may not even have to lean that much, right? But versus someone like myself, I'm gonna to have to lean. So again, I'm here and then I'm rotating with my, so notice how that rotation comes up. It's this hand pressing that blade downward, right? And as that, if I just do this, my blade's not in the water. So I have to lean forward to set that blade in the water. And there you go, right? So again, it's just enough to lean. I don't want to go out and I don't wanna collapse in myself and again, if you happen to see someone paddler like Danny Chain with the baby girl in there and talking about don't, I tell my paddlers, don't crush the baby. You don't want to crush the baby and put your whole body and collapse in yourself because then you're putting a lot of stress on your lower back. At the same time, you don't want to overreach just the sake of reaching where I remember back in the day, it was like, get out there and reach, right? Well, that's like me going out and trying to grab that kettlebell, I'm gonna reach for that kettlebell, but I can't lift that kettlebell from this part. I'm gonna have to drag it until I get my body directly, my weight behind it or on top of it, and then I'm able to lift. Now, I could certainly try to lift it from out here, but that would be very unhealthy. Put a lot of strain on my shoulder and specifically my lower back. We don't wanna do that. And the same thing applies when you put the blade in the water, okay? Again, as you can see here, now, this is really indicative to OC1 paddling. I really want to make sure that you, uh, you have to understand that whatever you're, if you're paddling on a team boat, it's whatever your coach is telling you what to do. You do what your coach tells you what to do. But when it comes to in the OC1, try this out. Because there's one thing to be said. You can paddle a big boat, on, you can paddle like a big boat on a little boat, but you're not going to get the same 
return as you would on the big boat because you don't have all that weight and you don't have physics working with you in that sense of momentum, right? But then you can though, you can paddle a little boat, a big boat like you would uh, paddle a little boat. And when you do that, you're gonna be a far more effective paddler, whether you're paddling in a team situation or in a, uh, a one man situation at the same time, should your coach prescribe to you a certain amount of movement, you'll be able to understand your range of movement, what you could do healthy wise versus just doing it and putting yourself at risk, right? Because the last thing the coach wants you to do or be is injured. So the idea again here, gang, is understanding what it is that you just really need to do, okay? Boom. Now, if I'm being asked, so you can see I'm leaning forward, right? I'm leaning forward. Now, I've seen, I've seen some pretty amazing paddlers, and I just see them just poof, 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 poof. What they've already done is that they've already incorporated, they're, they're loading, they know how to load, they, they, they understand what they're feeling for, and they're loading their, their, their weight behind the blade and then putting it on top of it, right? As they load that blade and they grab that water, they feel that load, they feel their weight directly behind the shaft, and then they're bringing themselves to it. If you've got really long arms, you don't necessarily have to throw out and sell your weight in front of you, just as long as you understand what it is that you're trying to grab for. Just like walking, right? My coach says, hey, paddling's like walking. You hit, and what you're not doing is you're not driving down, or you don't reach, you know, lunge just to take a step. You just go based on what your body allows you to do, right? And so, uh, again, just coming back to how much lean. And again, it's just typically, if I was one on the one man, really just right, right up in front of my feet, right? I'm not trying to go too far out because that's just going to make me slip or waste time. I just want to get the blade in the water and go, right? And what I'm what I'm simply doing is just trying to manage fatigue and at the same time remove excessive movement. So to answer the question of how much lean, just enough based on what you feel is, is necessary to put the blade in the water. And what I mean by that, think about it here. I don't have my watch on, but imagine I have my watch. I gotta put I I gotta put that blade in that water and Boom, and I can see what time is it. And when I see my wrist and I see my watch, I already know that blade is completely submerged. It is blade, it is placed in exactly where it wants to be. Now you start putting it in too deep, well, this is what's gonna end up happening, right? So again, if the paddler, if the, the, the blade designer wanted you to have the, your blade all the way here, he would have made the shaft here. Just go, if you want to have it that deep, go just paddle with the steering blade, okay? So um, again, just enough when you know that top hand's directly in front of you and you've leaned just enough and you feel that purchase, you feel that grab, you're done. You don't need to lean any more than that, right? At the same time, you don't want to overlean. If you overlean, you, you lose balance, you lose, you lose control. So again, leaning forward is the act of setting the blade in the water. If you could just, if you don't even have to lean, you could set that whole blade in and get that all nice, nice good grab with that full blade. <laughs> hey, you got those long arms, go for it. But it also has a means to help you get a rhythm, right? It helps you, the, the movement. So there, even if it looks like some of those top paddlers are not moving, or they're moving, right? They're just not overdoing it. They're staying within the realm of what they feel is comfortable and applying what is required of them to do when they put that blade in the water. Some folks will move, some folks are not. I've been told that, I've, I've read, I don't ever see your body moving, but I know my body's moving. It's just maybe because of the fact that you see the boats moving along with it. Your uh, water's going to a lot of things. Perspectives can be a lot different when it is on the water versus being on land. And so don't get caught up with what you see, what everyone else is doing. Focus on what you're doing, right? Focus on what you're feeling. And if you feel comfortable and you feel that grab and it feels natural and it feels like you're almost not doing any work, yet that boat is moving, hey, if it, that's what I tell my paddlers, if it feels good, you're doing it right. The tendency is when it starts feeling good, people just want, oh, yeah. And then they think like they're eating at a buffet and they just overdo it and all of a sudden they get tired and they lose it and you never get that good feeling back. Because why? Now because you're tired. Because you really wanted to oversell it. Stay within your means. Stay within your most, within your range of motion. Okay, some people can move better than others. Some people don't necessarily have to move as much. Find out what works for you, okay? And then when you have that understanding, then you can better apply it on the water and allow your body to adapt to the movement 
And through that adaptation, you then develop and you then get these batteries. If you have any other questions, by all means, shoot me, shoot me an email, shoot me a direct text, or I'm sorry, a message on Facebook and Instagram. I'll be more than happy to share my perspective. Again, in today's blade, I'm, I'm featuring my favorite blade uh, when it comes to outrigger is a hipless stick uh, made by my coach, Danny Ching. And one of the things that I like about um, the hippo stick is just basically it's, it does the work for me. Meaning if I let it, it'll do the work for me versus if I try to do the work and I overdo it, it's going to punish me. Um, it's a really balanced blade. Um, I like it a lot. There's two types of versions for it. There's the Tahitian, which is this, and then there's the heart attack or the OC1 blade. Um, my favorite, hands down. Um, so all in all, if you have any questions, if you want to look into what the hippo stick is about, you can check out their uh, website at hippostick.com or you can check them out on Instagram. All right, guys, I hope to hear from you soon. If you have any questions and I hope you enjoy the content, talk to you soon. <laughs> talk to you later. Cheers.